Right, Frisset. That's a uh, shellfish that actually preserved all this sort of scale pattern. So it's, if, if you look at it very closely, you can see there's a pattern to it. And that's originally, we think, sort of colour retention. Germans have found the same species of fish that um, they find in some of them, which is equivalent to the age of the Kimmer's clay. And they've got better preserved ones that show evidence that the, the colour of the scales were yellow and black. And of course, as a shell fish, you stand a really good chance of swimming in the shell and not getting predated. Your mate's probably more likely to get predated. But also, with those sort of yellow and black scales, as, that, as they turn as a shell when a predator approaches them, it gives them a sort of millisecond of a chance to actually get away, i.e. that the predator, just that big flash, has got to choose one, and it's very, very difficult just to choose one when they get that sort of flash. It gives them just an opportunity to, to uh, another way of getting away from the predator. What's really interesting also with it is actually, if you look at it very closely, you can see the food tracks, you can see the sort of copper light coming out, sort of vent there. All the fins are preserved perfectly. And the only way I've, when I found that is actually just the top fork of the tails just indicated that sort of fish that had been preserved there. And just at the tip of the jaw, where that jaw was open, you could just see that edge of that and where the sea had sort of worn that away. And so that's one of our best preserved ones. There's another one here, much smaller specimen, but it shows exactly the same features as that one. You can see that slightly curved, so is that one. It's probably a preservational defect in these things where the sort of ligaments tighten up and you just get that sort of like curve. The middle one again has got the same colour preservation as those as well. So we get this, it's quite endemic in these sort of upper Kimberley Clay, that sort of preservation of those fish. And Thrissips as a species, they're different ones. Some are really large teeth, some are very small teeth. And funny enough, I just found one now that these are the largest that have been described and found, but I've got another one twice as big as that. So as we go up through the Kimmage clay, these things certainly change and we've got one twice as big as that, which may indicate some different sort of um, species again. So that's the most common fish we find in the Kimmage clay thrissips.